Report says commercial banks contribute to deforestation. Ten acts voted for amendment. And warning on World AIDS Day of risky times ahead. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Wednesday's news. As the globe tries to take steps to address climate change following the recent climate change meeting in Glasgow, more trees to absorb carbon dioxide are being cut down in Papua New Guinea. NGO group Act Now PNG released a report today revealing major banks in PNG contributing to deforestation. Commercial banks operating in Papua New Guinea have given at least 300 million kina in available credit since 2000 to the country's five largest exporters of tropical logs. A new report by research and advocacy organizations Act Now and Jubilee Australia Research Centre has revealed. Act Now PNG campaign manager Eddie Tanago said the true amount of financing could be as much as three times as high due to gaps in companies reporting and OPEC funding processes for logging activities. He said the financing was given at the same time as multiple government reviews, court judgments and non-government reports exposed illegal practices throughout the logging sector. Our new report reveals that commercial banks operating in Papua New Guinea have given at least 300 million kina in available credit since the year 2000 to the country's five largest exporters of tropical logs. The true amount of financing could be as much as three times as high due to gaps in the company's reporting and make a funding process for logging activities. The financing was given at the same time as multiple government reviews, court judgments, and non-governmental reports that exposed illegal practices throughout the logging sector. Our report finds that the Bank of South Pacific and Kina Bank and the Australian banks Westpac and ANZ have all given financing to one or more of the top five logging companies in the past. Westpac and ANZ say they have ended their financing relationships with logging companies that don't have FSC or PEFC certification. But BSP and Kina Bank have not given the same assurances. Kina Bank says it has no current financing relationship with Rimbunan Hijau, but has not given a clear answer on whether it is financing other logging companies now or will in the future. In 2017, a Bank of PNG National Risk Assessment concluded that illegal logging in the country poses a significant money laundering threat. The assessment argued that there are strong indicators of large-scale corruption and illegal logging in the forestry sector in PNG, which result in high levels of proceeds of crime, and that it is widely accepted that the problem is widespread and the lost revenue is extensive. Any bank that chooses to finance PNG's large-scale tropical forest logging risks of being complicit in illegal activity associated with the sector. It is completely unacceptable that high street banks should be facilitating and profiting from the destruction of vital tropical forest resources. And therefore, we are calling on all the commercial banks operating in Papua New Guinea to end all banking services to companies involved in large-scale tropical forest logging and to publish information on current banking relationships with the sector. They should also commit to providing redress to communities affected by the logging operations, whether the banks have been directly or indirectly linked to human rights abuses through their business relationships. Act Now is calling on all the commercial banks operating in PNG to end all banking services to companies involved in large-scale tropical forest logging and to publish information on current banking relationships 
with the sector. Tanago said they should also commit to providing redress to communities affected by logging operations, whether banks have been directly or indirectly linked to human rights abuses through their business relationships. The report also calls on the Financial Analysis and Supervision Unit at the Bank of PNG to continue its efforts to investigate potential money laundering threats and other illegal activity associated with PNG's commercial banks and the logging sector and take appropriate enforcement action when legal breaches are identified. Shamin Poriambe of National MTV News. The Marape government's 2022 national budget was passed on voices yesterday on the floor of parliament. After a lengthy session that ended in the evening, members also voted for amendments to 10 bills, among them the Income Tax Act, Goods and Services Tax and Customs Tariff. Ten budget enabling bills were passed yesterday on the floor of parliament after a lengthy debate on the 2022 national budget. Excise Tariff Amendment Bill, Income Tax Amendment Bill, Goods and Services Tax Amendment amongst the ten. The Excise Tariff 2022 Amendment Bill 2021 proposed amendments to the Excise Tariff Act 1956 to 1 reduce the excise six monthly increase rates for tobacco and alcohol from 5% to 2.5%. With the intention to provide relief to the industries. Secondly, the tobacco second excise tier to counter illicit tobacco or illegal unlawful drugs for the next two years starting today, 1st of December to 30th November 2023. Thirdly, increase excise rates for antisocial drinks, strength greater than 10% of alcohol content by a further 100 kina per litre of alcohol. That is, the more alcohol content, the higher the cost. This will lower the high consumption level of high alcoholic products, which lead to social and health issues. And finally, the amendment to the Excise Tariff Act 1956 now removes import taxes on electric vehicles to encourage import of electric cars in Papua New Guinea to support green economy. The Income Tax 2022 Budget Amendment Bill 2021, also passed yesterday, now introduces a flat rate market concentration levy, which will apply to licensed holders in the commercial banks and the telecommunications sector, with market concentration of over 40%. This bill specifically targets BSP Financial Group Limited and Digicel. The amendment to the Income Tax Act 1959 sees the increase in the infrastructure tax credit rates from 0.75% for extractive sector and 1.5% from agriculture and tourism sector to a flat rate of 2%. This is to encourage more physical infrastructure in the project impacted areas and enables more tax credit related programs. The reform will come into effect on the 1st of January 2022. And so today I just want to offer a closing accommodation. Uh, I just want to say in the budget we may not please all. Uh, and as I conclude, I want to thank the Speaker of the House. If you feel that this budget is deficient by your budgetary submissions, well, I offer to you a working partnership with the Treasurer and the Finance Minister and the Planning Minister. I also want to say thank you to the Chief Justice. We tried our extreme best under, under extreme conditions to retire what was issued as a 400 million kina courthouse. Our government paid over 300 million kina of that contract thus far. And next year we have some money to retire. If there is some areas where we may have fallen short in this, in this uh, budget drafting and budget presentation, our FMS system collapse, our treasury team and finance team were under the pump to deliver this, and the board, the judiciary, and the, and, and the legislator. If we have missed anything, we ask you, there is enough space for us to sit down and go through as we close 2021 and our personalized 2022. I speak to my friends and relatives in Bougainville. There's also 
enough space for you, and we've given you due respect in the allocations of 2022. To our ordinary people right across our country, this is your budget, especially those of you in the remotest places. Your school fee we picked up. Your hospitals we are addressing. We charge you no new tax, no new GST, no new personal income tax, no new corporate tax to the SME and small business. We were responsible. We cared for you. And so I just want to appeal to our people as we close for 2021. It's not easy. Kilawani National MTV News. Kairuku Hiri MP Peter Isoaimo believes his electorate has qualified on the prerequisites set by the Electoral Boundaries Commission. The vast electorate in Central Province has a total land mass of 10,820 square kilometres, which the member says should be split into two separate electorates. He questioned the status of the report by the Electoral Boundaries Commission in Parliament today. A series of questions was raised by Kairu Kuhiri MP Peter Iso Aimo on the floor of Parliament today regarding the matter to split his electorate. Iso Aimo says he is happy that the Electoral Boundaries Commission has concluded its awareness, but he wants to know when the report will be presented in Parliament. When I'm time through by this report, it comes to Parliament, and um, how does the government view? This report by come up long this platform of parliament or by Misuruke me go long next time of parliament or people block Kairukuhiri like Save. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The member says with the population increasing close to 200,000, this would require a split to the electorate for services to reach the people. Of the five districts in central province, Rigo Abao, Gualala, Kairuku Nahiri, Tupla district one time, he cut them up long electorate for me. Me Tupla Governor Blom me been concerned Pinis Long Kairuku district at Berena na Mirigena Long Hill District Long Split must come up. Lo politic na nadla one and one em em you right. But long service delivery em heavy too much long me one pla member long karim tupla district one time. Especially long service delivery na distribution of the DSIP funding. Responding to the concerns, Prime Minister James Marape confirmed that the Electoral Boundaries Commission's report has been finalised but is still waiting to be processed before tabling it in Parliament. Uh, from the preliminary reports that have been briefed on, uh, Karakuhiri does qualify amongst uh, three or four other electorates and there's a heavy population in those electorates. And so let me assure the member, as soon as the report has been processed through Cabinet, uh, the Parliament will uh, have custody of this report and Parliament's deliberation. Podivai National MTV News. Southern Highlands Governor William Powie wants to put a stop to the importation of potatoes from abroad. He says local farmers in his province have the potential to supply potatoes in surplus, but are discouraged due to the low price demand. He directed his question to the Minister for Commerce and Industry in Parliament today, but the response came from Transport Minister William Sam. My provincial government has been having difficulty with the factory on the ground and encouraging my people to grow potatoes. My question is that because there is a free importation of chips from Europe freely, from uh, Australia and New Zealand on a very lower prices, it's discouraging our people to go and work because factory no pay them good low price. So me ask him, as part of the government take back, uh, empowering more legal man, the resource. Long enough government stop him this free import of chips of potatoes from Europe underneath the bilateral relations or one of them relationship like that long end. They have free influx of potatoes into, into this country from Europe, from New Zealand, from Australia. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I, I thank the uh, good governor for Southern Islands for asking an important question. Uh, Mr. Speaker, it's an important question and uh, I don't want to mislead Parliament. Can I uh, seek permission to uh, uh, get information from my department? I know you have uh, had a series of meetings 
uh, without uh, department. So Mikishim talks over and then I'll report to parliament tomorrow. The COVID-19 pandemic has decimated the world tourism sector, costing billions of dollars, closing international borders, causing loss of business and leaving millions unemployed worldwide. Papua New Guinea was no exception. The Tourism Promotion Authority annual report presented in Parliament saw a significant drop in international arrivals. Our country, Papua New Guinea, has not been spared by these global purges. And it has greatly affected our international and domestic tourism numbers since late 2019. Many of our, our local Papua New Guinea tourism operators and businesses have been closed, jobs lost, and many families and households seriously impacted as a result. Mr. Speaker, this is also clearly affect, reflected in the international visitor arrivals statistics to our country in the first six months of this year, 2021. After recording healthy growth in the international visitor arrivals to Pianjin 2019, international arrivals in 2020 was hit hard by the coronavirus pandemic. And this downward trend is expected to continue in the next two years. And who knows, with the current changes, whether the virus is now mutating it will be prolonged. Already in the first six months, from January to June of 2021, statistics confirmed that there was a 76% fall in international visitor arrivals to Papua New Guinea. Mr. Speaker, this is about 25,000 few arrivals compared to the 33,000 international visitors received in the same period last year, 2020. All segments of arrivals, including business, leisure, employment, and others to the country, dropped. A significant drop. The cruise ship and the cruise tourism sector in particular, as I highlighted earlier, recorded zero. Nil, no other arrivals, as there were no cruise ships visiting our country since 2020. Mr. Speaker, while the Marape Basil government has done well, it, it leveled best by introducing the economic stimulus package for our SMEs and M MSMEs. Unfortunately, many in our tourism sector, and especially our cottage industry, have never really benefited to this day. You're watching National MTV News. We'll have more stories after these short messages. Stay with us. Welcome back. The acting director of the National AIDS Council, Secretariat Tony Lupiwa, says risky times are ahead for the spread of COVID-19 and HIV infections as the country hosts elections next year. Two people die every day in PNG from AIDS. He made this statement as the country commemorated World AIDS Day today. The symptoms of AIDS come up. In an interview with MTV, the acting director says the fight against the deadly virus isn't over yet. National election coming up, there will be people congregating to campaign houses. There will be sex uh, uh, involved and, uh, and there will be congregations, meaning that HIV and COVID-19 will be, will be there and people will be at risk. Everyone in Papua New Guinea, please remember that HIV is still here and it is increasing again. As I said before, uh, as we uh, celebrate this World AIDS Day today, the 1st of December, there will be 10 people, new infections of HIV will occur today. At the same time, two people will die of HIV today. He continues the infection rates are slowly climbing. People thought that you know, HIV is gone, and so they've gone back to doing the usual high-risk stuff. Uh, when that is happening, we are seeing the numbers starting to climb again. So from 0.65% in 2010, uh, 2013 to now, 0.9% in 2021. 
While much of the focus is on COVID-19, HIV and other health matters still remain in the country. Funding for the AIDS Secretariat to help continue its work is a must. If we don't, then we will have people infected with HIV, we will have people infected with COVID-19 during the national election. So um, I would um, want to see government uh, not take the focus away from HIV. Bradley Valenaki, National MTV News. Founder of the People's Party, Sir Peter Ifata, says leadership is important and it's important that like-minded parties align themselves to lead the country forward. He was speaking today when announcing the party's drive to recruit intending candidates ahead of the elections next year. The People's Party is on a recruitment drive for interested intending candidates ahead of the 2022 election. What you need is to get good quality leaders into parliament. People who will serve our population, you know, honestly. We're not thinking of a very big number because we're a small party. We don't have um, the resources that many other bigger parties have. We'll be working with a very small number of uh, candidates. The party's founder says candidates must be credible. At least we are starting off as a party with no baggages. We are clean as we, <laughs> you can see, you know. The People's Party, established in 2006, isn't a big gun in the race, but wants to recruit members from strategic places to contest the seats in the national elections. You assess the leadership over five years. You, are, you assess as members of parliament over five years. A lot of people are always disappointed with leadership. That seems to be the normal, the, the attitude of our people. But when it comes to actual, actual voting, they end up voting for the same people they complain about. The party says it stands for good governance, law and order, and education. It plans to go out in a big way to market its party policies in the coming weeks. Bradley Valenaki, National MTV News. A kind gesture was shown by an individual from the United States of America to teachers in Goilala District of Central Province. Dr. Oliver Page donated shoes to the teachers from Sacred Heart Secondary School in Tapini. The donation comes after the news of the teachers went viral on Facebook. Their story, it took them four days to walk from Tapini to Port Moresby to deliver grade 10 written expression papers for marking six months ago. The donation was received to yesterday by a UPNG lecturer who was liaising with the donor and handed over the shoes. And the, the, they walked from uh, Tapini all the way to Port Mosby, and the story was covered in the uh, covered by MTV News. And then I shared uh, that post on my Facebook wall, and then Dr. Oliver Page, my friend in the United States, he saw my uh, post and he contacted me as to what we can do to help them. And then I I I I, I discussed with him about background of the secondary school, the location, the geographical impediments and all that. And then uh, we said that uh, we should buy some shoes for the teachers who walked all the way from uh, Tapini to Port Mosby for a very noble cause which to deliver the uh, written express and exam. I think the main purpose of the donation of the shoes are mainly for uh, there was a, a Facebook page that was put out on our trip from Tapini uh, in June uh, with the Creighton uh, National Examination. We walked from Tapini to Bakwedu. And I think this was the outcome of uh, the page that was shared, uh, not only in Papua New Guinea, but uh, the page reached uh, people from overseas too. And now looking at the Nasfund market report, the Kina closed unchanged at 0 0.2850 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina is buying 0.2775 US dollars, 0 0.3850 Australian dollars, 0.2379 Euro and 30.93 Japanese yen. 
Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold is trading higher, coffee and cocoa closed lower and copper closed higher. Crude oil is trading higher, palm oil and copper closed lower. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed higher, the ASX 200 is trading higher and the ordinary is, tr is trading higher. You're watching National MTV News. We'll be back with more stories after these short messages. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the news. The PNG Chamber of Mines and Petroleum today hosted day one of the two-day PNG Mining and Petroleum Conference and Exhibition. In the keynote address, Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea assured its investors in the mining and petroleum industry that PNG will ensure long-term partnerships with investors for equitable returns. The 2021 PNG Mining and Petroleum Conference and Exhibition started today hosted in two venues through a virtual setting with participants from the Hilton Hotel in Brisbane, Australia and the Hilton Hotel in Port Moresby, Papua New Guinea. The Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, James Marape, gave the keynote address to the mining and petroleum investors tuning in. Marape encouraged more investment in the resource-rich nation of Papua New Guinea especially in the extractive industry of oil and gas. So I'd like to encourage everyone who are listening it from the outset. Papua New Guinea is not a place to fear in as far as your investment dollar is concerned or investment China is concerned. We have had world-class investors in us and I, I beg a pardon to my friends in Newcrest and Harmony. Uh, they are part of our world-class investors in our country. And so we are open for business. Today, as we have been open for business the last 46 years, and we will be open for business into the next 46 years and beyond. In recent years, under the Marape-led government, the issue of unlocking the resources of the country has been in the forefront of government, and better shares of the resource dividends through partnerships with the government. We are trying to go into an unlocking of our resources and going for partnership with all resource developers in our country. That is why in the oil and gas and mining space, you have Kumul Petroleum and Kumul Mining as partner in the extractive industry or partner in the oil and gas business and in the mining business. When you have Kumul Petroleum and Kumul Mining as your partner, you rest assured that your goalpost is fixed. They are your equal partners in this business and they give you the added security you need to ensure that government is at your uh, fingertips to attend to not just business issues, but more importantly, the social issues that you work and operate in, in PNG and the place of extraction of the resources. The Papua LNG project is picking up and is said to be one of the biggest projects in the country, with assurance from the Prime Minister that the project will start soon. The Papua LNG project has never been off track. Papua LNG project is working on time, on schedule. The project partners, led by Total, assisted by Exxon, uh, and assisted by PNG government's flagship company, Kumu Petroleum, uh, and all partners in the Papua LNG are working on site. We are on schedule for pre feed, a uh, running feed and pre feed together. FID will possibly be in 2023, 2024. PNG is a country that welcomes investments in oil and gas, as well as the mining industry, and hopes for long term investments. We have been a known investment address for many of world-class investors over the last 46 years and we will be because Exxon is here to stay with us for the next 20 years, 30 years plus. Total is here to stay with us for the next 20 years, 30 years plus. Newcrest, uh, Harmony, uh, Barrick, uh, JX Nippon. So this is a place of evidence for you to see as potential investors in Papua New Guinea. Fear not. Uh, elections can come and go, prime ministers can be changed, but Papua New Guinea is a robust place of investment remains, and these companies who have been with us have been making a good rate of return. Fidelis Sukina, National MTV News. People from Bulolo and Manyamia in Morbi province have raised concerns over the need for proper bus stops in Lay City. This will ensure their safety when coming into town to do business. They said security and safety is their biggest concern. 
The Bulolo Menyama bus stop was recently moved to this section of the city as part of addressing crowd control following the outbreak of the Delta variant in Eastern Highlands and the country. Chairman of the Bulolo Menyama Route 2 Association, Dan Nali, said the new location is better than the previous one, which was too small and too close to the main road. He is working closely with the Lay City Authority to develop this area into a proper bus stop for the Bulolo and Menyama commuters into Lay. I am an assistant for the Lay City, Two come inside, lo help me blah, all potas blah me, lo walk walk one time, lo many miss la bus stop. Uh, secondly, me like him, Mosem. Me like him, uh, lazy the authority, please provide him shade, lo me lo ya. Put two more stand, and shade, go on top of him, go out, lo road boy. Or a man, Mary can come, Nasiran is sick, wait him car, PMV, blah, me lo call up, Nago. Now me like him, number Sandy, me like him, signboard, lo upside, now lo upside. The need for proper bus stops for commuters from outside districts has been an ongoing problem. In 2015, the Morobe Provincial Executive Council had allocated a hockey field in the city's main market area to be used as the Bulolo Menyama bus stop. To date, nothing has eventuated. So this is the bus stop and long time come. 2014 yet, me time me stop was in chairman of the PMA Association. So, Route 2, Wobble Lock, many cities like there, and I'm now in Oki Film, all provincial government, and in the government block, government ship block, Kerinaru, and all allocated finish, but also me to finish, I'm stop yet. Matter of me, push, push, push now, and the authority come inside. Route 2 begins at the Nine Mile Junction and covers the Bulolo Menyama and Wampar highways. Mr. Nali said the Lay City Authority has given a good response to develop the new location into a proper bus stop for the Menyama and Bulolo commuters. Charlene Airy, National MTV News, Lay. Meanwhile, Medang province recorded 17 positive HIV AIDS cases, including a four-month-old infant in the last six months. Authorities are concerned that while focus is on the coronavirus, HIV AIDS is prevalent in society and needs to be addressed with equal importance. Martha Louise reports from Medang. The United Nations Global Plan towards the elimination of new HIV infections among children by 2015 is a commitment to end pediatric AIDS. That means no baby must be HIV positive. HIV Response Officer Conrad Waduna says, while priority is focused on the fight against COVID-19, the World AIDS Day theme should remind us to end HIV both domestically and internationally. Already about this time, we should not be having babies born with HIV. But having a baby born to HIV is, is already showing that um, one, HIV is on the, on the rise, and two, that ignorance is slowly creeping in. Because for us, mothers who are pregnant should already go to, already go to the antenatal clinic for testing and if they're positive, should be put on treatment. Medang Provincial HIV Response Office could not give an accurate and correct prevalence rate of HIV status for the province. This is because they are yet to get data from the other 13 HIV AIDS facilities in the province. And having equal access to treatment, to other services by HIV, and to listen to the voice of those people who are infected, affected, and, and, and mostly the young people, yeah. Like we, we know the young people are sexually active and they, they can do anything and everything, including um, having unprotected sex. Yeah. Uh, it is basically our responsibility to work with the communities, um, communities of people and our lo our local communities to, to re-emphasize those preventative measures, yeah. And, and Get the, um, get the people to go back to when it was like a priority, when HIV was one of those priorities. Yeah. Um, I'll advocate more, uh, talk to the people, just remind them again that while COVID is here, HIV, HIV is also here. Medang province did not organize any big event to recognize World AIDS Day due to the surge of COVID-19. 
but the provincial health authority is still supporting the work of HIV with a strong emphasis on this year's theme. Just so that we can um, remember those who have passed on from HIV and those who were living with HIV and, and, and also those people who are advocating for HIV, people like yourself. He says that they should remind every citizen to end HIV, not only in domestic setting, but globally as well. The PHA pledged to continue strengthening the relationship with community-based organizations, networks of people with HIV and other stakeholders. Business houses, public and private organizations and individuals are encouraged to show support by wearing a red ribbon or red shirt. Martha Louise, National MTV News, Medeng. This weather update is proudly brought to you by MoniPlus, with you always. A look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region. Becoming cloudy with some showers and possible thunderstorms in Port Moresby and Daru. Mostly cloudy with some showers and possible thunderstorms in Kerama. Partly cloudy with chances of a few showers and possible thunderstorms in Alatau and Popandita. In the Mamasi region, partly cloudy with brief afternoon evening showers in Leh. Partly cloudy with a shower or two in Medang and Vanimo. Mostly cloudy with some showers and possible thunderstorms in Wewak. In the New Guinea Islands region, partly cloudy with chances of a few showers in Lorengau. Partly cloudy periods in Kavian, Kokopo and Rabaul. Mostly cloudy with the brief showers in Kimbe and Buka. And in the Highlands region, cloudy periods with a few showers and possible thunderstorms in Mount Hagen, Mendy and Wabeg, and cloudy periods with some showers in Goroka and Kundiawa. The weather update was proudly brought to you by MoniPlus, with you always. And that's been the news, sport and weather for Wednesday 1st of December 2021. Until next time, I'm Helen Sayer. Pleasant viewing, be safe and good night.